Hi, my name is Eric, and this is a short series about getting started with electronics. Today, we're going to talk about resistors. This is a metal oxide resistor, four band axial lead resistors, and this is a uh, what's called a wire round resistor. Resistors are awesome, and they play a major part in just about every single kind of electronic device that you can think of. This is an old DVD player that doesn't work anymore. But when it did, you can bet that the resistors found inside were passively making sure that all the different components were receiving the right amount of electricity. Notice that this DVD player is not plugged into the wall because I don't want to become part of an electronic circuit myself. Sure enough, there are a handful of through-hole resistors in here, but that actually seems like a lackluster amount to run all of these electronics. Let's dig a little bit deeper and see what we find. On a side note, when hacking electronics, it's important to rip them apart and totally destroy them so that they can never be used properly again. Just as I suspected, what we find on this second printed circuit is another kind of resistor that's called a surface mount resistor. Here's an old wah-wah pedal that is used to give your guitar that crappy classic rock sound. It's just like a resistor party in there. So now we've looked at a few places that you can find resistors, but what are these things for anyways? Resistors provide resistance in a circuit by opposing the flow of electricity through the circuit. Now, there are three important units of measurement that we need to consider when we're talking about resistance. The first is current. Current is how many electrons are flowing through a circuit, and it's measured in amps. The second, voltage, which is measured in V for volts is the electrical potential difference between two points in a circuit. That difference is what allows an electrical charge to move through resistance within a circuit. Voltage is the electrical potential difference between power and ground. The third thing, resistance, is measured in ohms, in accordance with Ohm's law, which is current equals voltage divided by resistance. Don't worry. Resistors are available in many different colors and make a stunning accessory to almost any outfit. The colors are there to denote the value of the resistance. Your typical four band axial lead resistors are denoted as follows. The first band is the tens place. The second band is the ones place. And the third band is the multiplier. And the fourth band is the quality based on the percentage of consistency. Once again, if you're worried about how complicated this sounds, there's no need to fear because there's plenty of resources to help you figure these things out without requiring you to memorize them. In the pages I've included, there is charts and graphs, and also there's a lot of really nifty tools to help you figure these things out. Here we've got a simple circuit set up on a breadboard. We've got five volts in reference to ground coming in on the rail. We give power to the switch so that when we press it, it allows electricity to flow to the LED in the circuit, then through a 220 ohm resistor and back to ground. Let's look at the schematic for this. We've got 5 volts going through the switch, through the LED, through the resistor, and then flowing back to ground. If we didn't have the resistor in place, the LED would burn out because too much electricity would be passing through it to ground. Now let's have some fun. I took apart this toy keyboard that I found at a dollar store, and sure enough, it's got a few resistors inside. In order to make a fun modification, we need to locate the resistor that limits the flow of electricity to the clock that runs this thing. Here's the clock, and here's the resistor. I've already clipped one end of the resistor and soldered a wire in place where it used to be attached. Now I'll clip on some alligator clips to one end, and a photocell to the other end. A photocell is a variable resistor that changes the amount of resistance passing through it based on how much light hits it. However much light hits this thing determines how much electricity is passed through to the little crystal that is running this whole piano. So if I start the little demo, I can make a tremolo effect. So now we've taken a really crappy toy and made it sound even crappier, which is awesome. Now, when you take an electronic circuit apart and alter it in that way, it's called circuit bending. There's an entire genre of music dedicated to making music with these types of devices. That said, 
go take some stuff apart and start playing with the resistors. And I'll see you later.